I'm back. Welcome, 2024. I'm gonna show you guys how to make some dough. I'm starting from square one, except now we're using the scale. We're upgrading big time. Matter of fact. We will go into scales of sorts like this. Which, these are what I call small scales and kitchen scales or micro scales. Best place to get these are at the smoke shop. They're cheaper there. And you can refer to them as the drug dealer scale. That's cool. Anyways, these are good for measuring things like salt, olive oil, yeast, sugar, diastatic malt powder, or anything that you want to measure in a small increment. Now, a kitchen scale like this is something where you want to measure higher weights, including your bowl, your flour, and your water. So, anyway, Let's get to it. Let's start by measuring all our small stuff. Give our scale a nice clean. In a minute. Hope everybody's enjoyed their holidays here. I love these things. Whenever you're weighing something, instead of tearing the scale, I like just turning it on with my teared weight ready to go. So I'm at 0, 0.0 grams. And before I measure anything, I need a recipe. So, my recipe is going to be 300 grams of flour. I'm going to go with 190 grams of flour, which should be just over 60%. And if I'm using 300 grams of flour, I need to figure out how many, how much uh, salt I'm going to use, olive oil I'm going to use, and sugar I'm going to use. So, I'm going to use 300 grams of flour. I want to use 2% salt. And I like 2% or less of everything else. So, no, no more than 2% olive oil. Uh, no more than 2% sugar. Salt, I want 2%. And it can touch a little more. That's how I look at it. Alright. So, let's measure our salt. 2% of 300 grams. Well... Pretty easy math. Let's do 1% of 300 grams would be 3 grams. Times 2, 6 grams. All right. Six point four, I'll take it. I can go a little higher, like I said. So that's my salt. I'm gonna put that somewhere. I remember where it is. Got to tear my scale new container just to be safe. Six 
same thing, 2%. 5.9. 5 Perfect. Two percent. With olive oil, if you have a container like this, put your finger on it, you can kind of control the flow. Seven grams. I got a leak in that device somewhere. Six, perfect. Fleischmann's instant yeast. So, if I'm gonna make a dough and I have the time, I would like to make a 48 hour dough or 72 at the most, 24 at the least. So, for that, pretty good um, standard parameter for yeast would be about 0.2% instant yeast which would equal 0.6% fresh yeast or 0.3% active dry yeast so I'm using instant yeast as I showed this is Fleischmann's it says bread machine and right under it says instant yeast. Pay attention to what it says. It could be yeast in a jar, but it's easily to be confused. I will show you. With something like this, Fleischmann's active dry yeast. Now active dry yeast is about two thirds the strength of instant yeast. In other words, I would measure for 300 grams of flour, 0.2% instant yeast would be 0.2%. It would be about 6 grams of yeast. 0.6 grams, I'm sorry. Zero point six to be exact. Perfect. 
Perfect. I thought I thought this all the way through, but I did not. Alright, so there is our yeast. kitchen scale with my dough bowl and I have it zeroed out on my kitchen scale. I'm going to start with my water and I know I'm going to use 300 grams of flour because 300 grams of flour makes pizza for two. So how much water do I want to use? Well I'm looking for something between 60 and 70, leaning towards 60. So I'm going to go between 65 and 60, which would be 62.5%. 62.5% of 300 is, I don't know, but 60% of 300 is 180. And 70% of 300 is 210. So I'm going to go with. 290. 190. I'm sorry. Perfect. Next, mix in my olive oil, my salt. my sugar, my instant dry yeast, IDY, instant yeast. And now that I got these in, I'm going to take it off the scale for a second. And with something, I'm going to mix the olive oil, salt, sugar, and yeast in the water. Try to make something homogeneous. As a liquid that will mix with the flour. You want to note that gluten is formed by just flour and water. Oil will coat the proteins, preventing some of the gluten formation. You're going to want to make sure your scale is zeroed out. And with something, you're going to want to measure out your 300 grams of flour. I kind of start by just getting everything off the side of the bowl, trying to cut down on the time it takes to clean later. Um, it also kind of helps with the kneading time. The more you do in the bowl, usually the easier it is. And when you first kind of mix everything together, there will be a lot stuck to the side of the bowl. I recommend scraping it off first um, versus later. 
you do want to make sure you get everything that's in your recipe in the dough. So all the stuff that stays on the side of the bowl when you're done is part of your recipe. So it's hard to take proper notes on a recipe if a third of your dough is stuck to the side of the bowl. So basically I'm continuing to scrape the sides of the bowl and have everything somewhat homogenized within the bowl. And uh, one good little tip for that is after you scrape the sides of the bowl, the rest of your dough, if you just kind of press towards the bottom of the bowl and go around in circles, it'll start coming together. And it's good to have everything out of your way and everything you need right nearby and easy to access. So I'm doing the last final touches in the bowl and then transferring to the table, showing that my hands are clean. And I will show you how clean the bowl is to ensure my whole recipe is right there on the table. Beautiful. And the kneading process really starts with just bringing everything together once again. Um, you can almost just press directly down and you will kind of get all the ingredients to start to homogenize. And after that, after you press, you'll kind of fold over itself. And press, I'm hitting both sides here. It's kind of similar to the to making a pizza in all honesty. Some people refer to the stretching of the dough for the pizza as kneading actually. And the whole idea is to agitate the dough. That's what really builds the gluten. You want to try to be somewhat symmetrical, but it doesn't matter as much as you think. Um, letting the dough relax also builds gluten. So I kind of do a, a mix of the two things. I basically try to get it somewhat smooth. I don't want chunks and I don't want dry flour. And that's all I'm really trying to achieve. And I'm being as gentle as I can. So if you use a ridiculously stiff dough, if you use 170 grams of water versus the 190 I use here, you might get something of that nature. And you won't have much of a choice but to have to be kind of rough and tough with the dough. With something like this, it's kind of soft and sticky and tacky. Um, not too much, just, just slightly, and uh, so I can be gentle with it, but I keep the dough moving the whole time, I'm agitating it like I said, In this process is a total of no more than say five minutes. And yeah, believe it or not, this these small light actions are all building gluten. I'm doing some kind of faux slap and fold here. It felt necessary. But yeah, this is where your signature comes into play. This is where your passion comes into play. So do become one with the dough. This is your time to do so. And let it rest. Make sure it's covered. I like to just turn the bowl upside down on top of it. That's how I do it. Wash your hands off, whatever you gotta do. And anywhere from five to 15 minutes, 30 if you want to. Uh, just wait, let the dough relax, and you'll see how much it develops in that time. So, I'll come back when it's ready. Alright, so... I think it was about 10 minutes it's been since I touched the dough. And, uh... Here I get back into it. You'll see... It's a little smoother, it might be hard to tell on the screen. But, from when I left it, it's smoother. So I grab a little pinch of flour... And I usually just do that just in case the dough is a little sticky. And I just get back into the kneading process. Which, not only is it about moving the dough, but it's also about stretching the dough. And you can see after that wait time, it's gotten stretchy. It doesn't just immediately tear, it has some stretch to it. So, I stretch it, I make it compact again. And, uh... I'm kind of, I'm starting to get into what's called a lamination process, which you'll see in a few seconds here. But lamination is, it has a few meanings in the world of dough. 
let's say croissant dough it's flattening it out adding a layer of butter folding it over itself flattening it out folding it over itself um, but it also it also appears in simple kneading which is basically where you just flatten out the dough and fold it back on itself and do the same thing so I'm doing that right here slapping it against the table to get to have it stretch having the dough stretch to its point of no return or its point of resistance really helps build gluten and so that's basically what I'm doing it's just stretching it see I'm grabbing like corners and swinging it I'm trying to have it stick to the table so I can pull the other side and it's gonna be tight because it's still in the mixing process but this helps you find clumps too to smooth them out it's, this kind of method has a lot of advantages it also lets you kind of feel your dough in the middle of it beyond just a ball shape and uh, you'll notice that there's that side that where you can see a lot of the gluten strands and stuff and then this side which is more of the smooth side the smooth side I try to keep on top throughout the whole process um, so every time I let the dough rest the smooth side will be up notice I'm when I do this I'm bring keeping that smooth side on top that's something you want to do I kind of just fold it on itself once again kind of keeping a spherical shape almost like balling dough starting to feel really good to me I can tell I'm starting to be more gentle with it I can tell I'm at the end of the process here with that I'm kind of just tucking it under itself to make a ball and that is when I decide it's good enough. It's pretty smooth. For pizza dough, that's all you need. For bread dough, sometimes you need more specific degrees of strength. Regardless, you still need some strength. And uh, this dough is definitely there. Um, some of you guys might have dough that ends up looking like pancakes. That's from a lack of strength most of the time. It can also be from a lot of water in your dough. Uh, perhaps too much hydration for your flour to handle um, uh, and sometimes it's from a lack of salt because salt helps tighten the gluten network uh, it's good to think about these things but yeah that's pretty much making the dough right there let's see what's next this is building tension So I add a little pinch of flour to the top of the dough. It's probably rested another 10 to 15 minutes. Um, what I want to do is on the smooth side on top, I want to make it able to slide on the table when I flip it over. And I want the sticky side that's on the bottom to remain sticky. Because I'm going to be folding it into itself. I'm showing that the dough sticks to my hand. Fold it into itself like so. I kind of pinch it together. And I'm just showing you that it spins on the table pretty freely. And once it's pinched together and sticky, you flip it over. Now it won't really move on the table. It doesn't spin freely. It might spin a little bit, but not, not too much. And this is where you're building the surface tension of the top of the dough. So I'm kind of, kind of balling the dough in a sense. And I'm just moving my hand around it and pulling back towards me to try to build that surface tension this adds a little bit of strength to your dough and it uh, it also smooths out your dough ball which is nice so once I get to a phase like that I can pop it back in the bowl and I 
can cover it. And I'm gonna let it rest for anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. Um, basically, if it's really cold in your house, go the full hour. If it's moderate, 30 to 45 minutes. And if it's quite warm in your house, just do 15 minutes. Thank you. 